Today we are designing our house and getting the land ready to build. Join us each week as we get closer to our goal of building our house from start to finish. In our last video we searched high and low until we found the perfect lot for us to build our home on. Over the last year and a half, we traveled everywhere in our van across North America, mm -hmm. and that gave us a ton of inspiration, and we saw plenty of homes, but we kept on coming back to the same similar style that we both enjoyed, mm -hmm. and that was more of a mountain home, yes. kind of a cabin-y feel when we're in places like Colorado, Wyoming, um, Banff, Alberta. While Michigan doesn't have mountains, <laughs> we still wanted a lot that had that nature feel yeah. and put similar styles that carried over into our Michigan mountain home. <laughs> <laughs> and after a lot of Googling, a lot of Pinteresting, some of the concepts we really enjoyed for the interior was like a big open concept, tall ceilings, statement kitchens, earthy materials like wood, cement, and stone. The first thing we have to do is meet with my dad to design the interior of our home. And there's a few like specifications and regulations that we have to abide by. So first off, we have our HOA, and within our HOA, we have to build a house that's at least 2,500 square foot. So that's a decent sized home. That's a very nice sized home, especially because the other thing that we want to do is we really enjoy the ranch style. Yes. So we want everything to be on one floor. So 2,500 square feet has to fit on one floor. So it's gonna be a spacious, house, especially us coming from a van. <laughs> That's way um, bigger than the van. So we do have a budget for this build, and this is also including the lot. Our budget for this whole entire build, all materials included, is 400,000. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's a, that's a pretty good amount. Yeah. Um, luckily, we got our lot pretty cheap. Yes, really And cheap. we are able to take out a lot of the cost of building mm -hmm. um, because we don't have a builder's fee. Yeah. So when, if you're looking to build your own home, that's something that you also have to consider. For us, mainly it's, it's materials and then any contract labor because we will be having professional contractors throughout this whole process. We'll be doing as much as we possibly can, mm -hmm. but some things are just done a lot better with professionals instead of us amateurs. I'm sure we'll make that mistake once or twice. <laughs> Claire, are you okay? Huh? Are you okay? No, it's good. It's been a long day. With our budget being 400000 it actually puts us in a pretty good spot because the comparable homes in the area are 600 plus. For us, we are going to be putting almost all the money that we have into this. We'll have draws or deposits that we will have to put in per contractor, so it won't be all up front and it'll be over the course of building the home. But we do know that the you know return on investment with a 400 k investment essentially and the lowest comparables being 600k should put us in a pretty good spot for a return on our investment exactly so after weeks of designing we finally came up with the final configuration of our home our home will be a 2800 square foot ranch with three bedrooms and three baths the living room and kitchen will be the focal point in the center of the house to create an open concept. We also included a large study so we will have an area to work. The basement will be a walkout, but we will finish that at another time. So now that we have the interior design figured mm -hmm. out, now we have to move on to the exterior design, yep. which is called elevation. This is something that we <laughs> learned. We've been calling the exterior de design. It's elevation. But it's called the elevation <laughs> of a home. So my dad came up with a quick base drawing of what our elevation will look little like. Little offhand sketch. Little offhand sketch. And then it was our job to do more research on what we wanted on the exterior. So some things that were very mountain home-like were a lot of wood, stone, gables, shingles. We loved all of it. What's a gable, Lisa? A peak. <laughs> Essentially wood beams that are in the front peaks of your home. You don't have to have them, but they're cool like exterior designs. They're just extra costs, essentially, for looks. A lot of mountain homes use a lot of wood on the exterior, but that's become an issue for us. And the issue arised, again, because of our HOA. Yes. In our HOA, in the fine print, mm -hmm. after we've already designed <laughs> the exterior of what we're like looking for in this mountain home, in the fine print, it says that we need to have 90% 
of the first floor to be masonry items. Well, we're building a ranch, so the majority of our <laughs> home is considered first floor. Yes. Masonry items are stone, brick, other types of... It's pretty much just stone, stone and brick. brick. <laughs> no wood shingles, no wooden planks at all. Um, basically, with the home that we wanted to create on the outside, it was gonna use three different materials. It was gonna be stone, board and batten, which is typically a wood, yep. and then a shake. Shingle. A shake shingle, <laughs> which is also a wood. We but like wood. that was gonna be more than 90%. How are we gonna create a design that fits the home that we want, mm -hmm. and also within budget, because stone is also expensive, expensive too. Expensive. And we don't want a brick home. So these rules were made um, when the subdivision was first developed, which was early 2000s when brick was the most popular item to use on the elevation of your home. But now since there's been a lot more very nice materials that have been introduced to this home building world, and we'd like to use those new materials. <laughs> So this was the original design of our house, but in order to be compliant with the HOA, we had to make some changes. So with the new design, we put more stone on the front and we also added brick to both sides and the entire back side of the house so that we would be 90% masonry materials. We are also going to make sure that the board and batten is a cement material so that it's considered masonry. And after a ton of emailing back and forth, this is finally approved. So now that we finally have our house plans together, it's time to submit to our county. And basically there's a long checklist of all the things that we have to get done before we can submit. Now we won't bore you with this entire list. Just know that each and every one of these items comes with their own cost and their own timeline. And a lot of paper. Now let's just go over just one, I promise, the plot plan. So first on the checklist, we have to submit the plans to an engineer so that we can get a plot plan. This is basically to make sure that the house can actually fit on the land. There's a problem. Our lot is in the shape of an hourglass. And originally we wanted the house to fit right in the middle, but the design was too wide for that area. So we need to decide if we want the house to fit in the front or in the back while maintaining a 25 feet distance from the wetlands and then a 30 feet distance from the neighbor. So it looks like we're going in the we're back. We're going to have to go in the back. So we're going to have a big front yard, but we'll have some privacy. Big front yard. Yeah. So within the engineering process, once we get the plot plan, then they're able to stake the lot. So before we get the lot cleared, the guys kind of know where to clear the trees for the house, and then they'll also use that to excavate. Staking is just the perimeter of the house, yeah. the corners of the house, and then they also do 10 feet from the house so that you understand where it needs to be dug and then like the clearance that you have as well. Yep. Everything else on the list ran somewhat smoothly, just took some time, but overall we have our building permit and now we are finally ready to get the land ready to build. Let's go. And we're starting. <laughs> We called in a local land clearing business to get the land properly cleared and cleaned up enough for the house. Once we finish the house, we plan to plant as many trees to make up for what we cut down. So we're walking the lot to understand what needs to be taken out. This place is buggy. And I didn't even realize how far back this lot went. Like, you can't even see anything. Like the lot train guys are all the way back there. We want to keep as many trees as possible. Obviously, this is one of our nicest trees, this oak here. But this is right where the garage is going, like maybe like 15 feet from this tree is like where the garage like square is. So we just wanted to make sure that we had enough perimeter around the garage with keeping as much as possible. It's happening so fast. This is the very back edge of our property. Can't see anything. <laughs> this will be this will be our backyard area. So we're just trying to make sure absolutely like certain trees are just not even touched. But um, we're trying to keep as much in the backyard as we can. 
because we just want a little bit of a backyard, but our backyard is actually pretty, pretty wooded. <laughs> after a long day of tree and land clearing, our lot is ready for our house build to begin. So far, after the purchase of our lot, permit, application fees, and land clearing, we are 82,000 into this project. In our next video, we finally get to start on the house by digging and pouring the foundation.